sooner or later, uh, there will be there will be a greater understanding, a greater acknowledgement that we need to develop our energy resources, or we need we need energy in general. And uh, I think there is, while there are many on the on the Hill and within the administration who believe that uh, alternative energy is going to save the day for us and can be a significant contributor to our energy mix, uh, in reality, I think the, the, there is a growing understanding that while these alternatives are important and they will indeed be part of our future energy mix, they're not ready today. And in fact, they're not really going to be ready to be more than a relatively small fraction of our total energy mix for a few decades to come. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't work to develop them. We absolutely need to develop them. But they're not really ready. So with that understanding comes the realization that we need, to, we need more of the traditional uh, fuels, uh, oil, gas, coal, uh, at least for the next few decades. And as that realization reaches policymakers, I think there will be um, a greater discussion of uh, where is the best place to get it, to get that, uh, that energy. Do we get it domestically? Or do we look offshore to find it? And I think uh, most, <coughs> most uh, policymakers acknowledge that uh, it's better to um, have uh, as much energy uh, developed here, in, here domestically as possible. Now, that doesn't mean that I think we can be energy independent. That's an entire different discussion. And energy dependence, energy independence is a pipe dream that some like to talk about. But um, I, I think certainly improving our energy security is important. And I think all policymakers rec recognize that. What is at the root of the debate on increased access versus higher taxes and job creation? Well, I think the root really is the desire for the government to increase revenue. And uh, I think there's an um, uh, uh, a knee-jerk reaction uh, whenever government uh, seeks new revenue to increase taxes. That's the easiest way. It's the, it's the simplest and most straightforward way. However, what we've shown in, in the recent analysis by Wood McKenzie is that there is a better way, and that better way is to increase access, uh, there, therefore increasing the taxes, rents, royalties, bonus bids that uh, come through the oil and gas development process. We're facing a pretty large deficit. How does the Obama administration feel about this? Are they going to use this as a way to try to close the deficit? Or are they against this? Where are they? We don't know where the Obama administration is uh, yet. Certainly, the, they have proposed increase in taxes in the last two budgets. Um, those tax, tax increases have not come to pass, as uh, Congress did not, uh, did, did not approve them. Uh, in their, in their uh, legislative process, but I, they certainly have had a number of tax proposals that have come up on the Hill, and uh, I anticipate that next month when the Obama budget comes out again, they will again have uh, increased taxes on the oil and gas industry on their, uh, in, worked into their budget. With Republicans taking over Congress, do you see that as being a more favorable outcome for the oil and gas industry? Well, uh, I, I, I would hope that uh, our energy policy is not necessarily a partisan issue. Um, that being said, there are certain, certainly uh, there were a number of Democrats uh, who uh, were emboldened by their supermajority they had um, to, um, uh, to, to uh, propose tax increases on the oil and gas industry. How has the news media covered issues relating to oil and gas uh, industry things that are going on? Um, I, think, I think they've tried to be fair. Um, the question, of course, is are they as um, aware of all the facts as, uh, as possible? And one of the things that we're trying to do uh, through a, an educational outreach effort is to make sure that all policymakers are aware uh, of the very many sides to the story. To the story. It's not just revenue, it's also jobs, it's, uh, um, uh, it, it's, it's energy security and a number of other factors that come into play. Do you have any opinion as to why it seems that uh, when gas prices were rising the last time around, we heard a lot about it when uh, President Bush was in office versus right now as they're going up again, we're not really hearing as much? Well, I think certainly the, the uh, gas prices have not reached the levels that they did previously. Uh, and I can't speculate as to why we're not hearing it quite as much, um, but uh, we may very well hear, it, hear more of that discussion in the future. And what would you like to see the outcome in terms of oil and gas policy or energy policy going 
going in the future? Well, I think, again, the, uh, the, the smartest, um, smartest energy policy going forward, at least domestically in terms of, uh, uh, of oil and gas, uh, is to increase access to those areas that are currently off limits. Now, this doesn't mean that we should not develop alternatives. Uh, they're very important, and we need to, need to move forward with uh, development of alternatives. But we can't assume that alternatives are going so to solve all our problems. We're going to need uh, oil and gas uh, for the foreseeable future. The EIA has estimated that even in 2035, we're still going to be relying on oil and gas for about 60 percent, uh, excuse me, 55 percent. Uh, of our total energy mix. Uh, that's a significant portion um, and that means that we have to uh, institute policies that are going to ensure that oil and gas remains a, a viable, uh, economic, economically viable alternative for our energy mix.